Right then, uh, just want to do a quick video. It's uh, it's five o'clock on Sunday, the 13th, 14th, 15th, 15th of April. I just thought I'd do a quick, have a quick chat, get a quick thing out there as regards things that have happened recently. Now, what what's been going on recently? What has uh, has boxing changed in the last week or so? What what's been happening? Apart from me finding two brand new bats in here, <laughs> they've been in here about five years. Hey, <laughs> uh, Prince. Uh, there's current state at heavyweight division. Well, Joshua won, didn't he? We know about that, don't we, Anthony Joshua? He won. Uh, where does that leave Yui Fury in the division? Where, where's Yui at the moment? Well, he's obviously he's not ranked in top 10 men in governing bodies. But, I'd have to say that uh, if Dillian White's ranked number one, Parker's ranked number five with WBC. Where, where's Yui? You put Yui above Parker, will not you? But Parker's number five, WBC. Where's Yui going to be after he beats Sexton? Where? Now, I was having a chat to somebody this morning, I'm not going to mention his name, but Yui to match is going to be very hard, isn't it? Oh, it still works. <laughs> You is going to be very hard to match. Uh, six foot six, got them long arms. You can do twenty rounds all day, right? What are his faults? What are you if you his faults? Let's have a look. I don't see any faults at all. Maybe you could say didn't throw his right hand enough against Parker, but he didn't need to, did he? You know he. Uh, he executed a game plan the the judges didn't go for, like they did Tyson against Vladimir. So what did Tyson throw? He just messed him about, didn't he? He did enough to win and school him. Same with Yui against Parker, but I don't want to go over old ground like that. It sounds like you know, it sounds like I'm a bit bit of it because Peter's my pal and I get on with them. I think that I think they've got a raw deal. Now I look at it now. Yui Fury's stock's gone up, hasn't it? You know, when you look at his stock, uh, they're all saying Joshua went 12 rounds with Parker, couldn't have not with him. Parker had a shorter arm reach as well, didn't he? Now, I was just looking at some statistics this morning. Parker threw 46 jabs more than Joshua did, but he was outlanded. 44, Joshua landed 44 more jabs than Parker, but Parker threw 46 more. Why is that? Let's have a look at that. Why is that? Joshua's got a longer arm reach than, uh, than Parker. A lot longer, six and a half inches longer. But he didn't make use of that in my opinion. But I think what happened is, We'll go back to the Carl Froch against Arthur Abraham fight. Now, I know for a fact that people in Carl Froch's team were thinking, oh God, if we get caught by Arthur Abraham, no matter how tough Carl's chin is, he is going to sleep. Now that's true, he's got bricks in his hands. Could you imagine him as a middleweight though, Arthur Abraham? Oh my God. But, there's a big but in that. Frotch had the longer arm reach, so he just got behind his jab all night. Now Parker's not a devastating puncher like Arthur Abram, but Robert McCracken, he's not the best technical trainer, is he? So he used Joshua's attributes to get the win and sold everybody this narrative that he needed the rounds and he's just showing he can box and there's more to his games than knocking people out. Well look, I know somebody who knocks about with Joshua and let me tell you this, they wanted to knock Parker out, but they also knew it was a dangerous fight. Because if you're a bit of a boxer mover, he's a night he's you're a nightmare for Joshua. Now getting back to Yui Fury, 
his stock's gone through the roof, hasn't it? Now, people are now saying, hang on a minute, Joshua, King Kong, the man that's saving boxing, who Tony Bellio keeps going on about, he's God. He gets flown to Dubai on a, on a Dubai tourism plane. They pay for him to go to Dubai, treat him like a king, all for free. All free, biz. He's treated like a god. He's got four belts out of the five. But yet, he went 12 rounds with Joseph Parker, little Joseph Parker, who's no good. But yet, Yui Fury went 12 rounds with Parker. Andy Ruiz did. Takam did. What does that tell you? It tells you that Yui Fury is in the mix, isn't he? Now, I'm not going to sit here and come out with quotes that certain people on Twitter come out with about Yui. Who don't, who, who a couple of them maybe know, but a couple of them don't really know and haven't seen Yui close up. I've seen him close up, I've seen him train. I've seen him, how he conducts himself outside the ring. I've seen how it, I've seen it all and let me tell you, he is the, he is the full package. But like I said, I don't want to become a fanboy. Because you can, when you get close to people in boxing or you become to know them, you become a fanboy. I look at the s statistics, you always had a defeat against Parker. I don't think he lost that fight. I think he won that fight. Nine rounds to three, eight rounds to four. He certainly didn't lose it ten rounds to two. Now, as far as I'm concerned, he's uncrowned world champion, WBO champion. But Joshua's got that belt now, hasn't he? But them belts were Tyson's belts, weren't they, really? So Joshua's a paper champion. And if you either got the nod, he would have been a paper champion, wouldn't he? If he'd, if he'd, have, if he'd have got the nod against Parker. But there's a lot of things that go on in boxing that a lot of fans don't get to know. And... There's some stuff that I get, I do get to see and I can't come out with everything. Even though I do like to uh, say it as it is, you know, sometimes I see things and a certain person will say, don't put that out, we'll show you this Russ and let's just keep it amongst ourselves. Some of the things I've seen were disgusting what happened, but he's the uncrowned champion and I've got Yui to win a world title. I've been on the internet all morning thinking, what route could Yui take? Has anybody any ideas? Because I'm baffled. All the belts are on lockdown. Man things are being manoeuvred in background. It's not chess, it's checkers, isn't it? Now, I don't know what's going on, but this is how I look at it. It's going to be an hard, hard for Yui to get his title shot. And I think the only way he's going to get his title shot is through getting in a mandatory position. Have a look. Four minutes. I think if he gets in a mandatory position, he'll do well. What do you think to me top? Porky's Corner YouTube. Shout out to my sponsors, K Official, D O T com, K Official D O T dot but spelt dot com. His name's Paul. He sent me this. He's got some more he's sending me. That's very nice of him. It's nice to get stuff like that. I'm not in boxing for money, as I keep pointing out to people. Uh, but yeah, it's nice to get, nice to get stuff and. Uh, it's a nice top actually, usually I have to have arms to cut up, so look. <laughs> brilliant, isn't it? So, brilliant. It's very comfy as well. And it's and it don't, you know sometimes when you take a new top off, you get a bit of fluff on it, don't you? And it's, it's a really good, good mate. It's a, something to do with a porn channel, I think. Just my luck, in it? With, is it three, three or four sponsors I've got? And, but he was the first one who actually offered and so first sponsor I get <laughs> is something to do with porn and I don't watch porn but that uh, looks like a naked lady and whatever I probably should nip it round to Dave Allen and he? he's into this kind of stuff but uh, but yeah uh, 
And right, I'm starting to do these interviews in here now because when I do them in the house, if I've got kids, they're running, they're running riot, or there's dog running riot, or there's interruptions, so I'll just do, do them in my shed. This tongue and grill shed that my mate uh, did for me. It's alright, isn't it? You like it? It's got all gym equipment, inland peak bar, preacher, you know. You won't think I used to be a prison gym, or they would you 11 stone me a six pack? That were about six stone ago. <laughs> But getting back to Yui, I think that Yui's just going to have to get into his get into his mandatory position. I don't know which governing body Mick and Peter are going to put him in uh, after he beats Sexton, but he's the British champion there and he's on map and he, he's back on track, isn't he? And I think if Yui can get another couple of fights in maybe June or July, just get out a few times this year on, on certain shows, I think that you know he'll, he'll climb up the rankings. I mean, you never know what channel he's going to be on there. I would assume he'd be on channel five, but if he can get out again quick, working, you know, working with other people, other promoters, and people all working together, I think that he can climb rankings and get his manager position because he's good enough, isn't he? I mean, people are now saying to me that these are the man, men in the street, like neighbours and people coming up to me saying here you were right about Joshua Russ he's, he's not all that good is he I said no he's good he's very good he's world class but he's not what the hype suggests you know he's got what has he got 14 sponsors all blue chip companies paying something in the region of 20 million pound per year you know so he's probably he's probably on a fortune right this is before he's fighting I need to change that thing so it goes back from 30 minutes instead of 12 minutes to keep having to jump up. So where were we now? We'll get, we're on about Joshua, won't we? Where, where does Yui fit in in all this? This is what I want to know. Yui's going to have to get into his manager position. But as regards Joshua, got all these sponsors. It's a smash and grab. They've got all these, what, 14 sponsors, plus they're doing an evening with Anthony Joshua's. He's on £20 million a year in sponsorship and he's getting £18 million a fight so why don't you just pay Wilder what he wants pay Wilder the going rate and let's have a, a champion with all the belts all five belts plus a ring magazine, six belts never been done in heavyweight history but we're also talking about the weakest weakest heavyweight division since since Ali, since Ali got beat off Spinks, he came back, he rematched Spinks, he retired then in 78, he came back at the end of 1980, because the division were weak, they had to bring him back. Now, I'm hearing a rumour around the campfire that Vladimir might be getting ready for another run. Why? I'll tell you why, shall I? Because Vladimir's competitive, he sat at home and he's thought, do you know what, I went life and death with Joshua, I dropped him and I could have took him out but I didn't want to take a risk because he had that mindset in, inside him, didn't he? Vladimir fought to his advantages, didn't he? His jab, he had a weak chin, so he had to just stay behind and play safe. He went back into safety mode and that's where he made a mistake in my opinion he went back into safety mode and he made a mistake but what can you do we just uh, let me just think about that now what I've just said there he made, Vladimir went into safety mode why did he go into safety mode because he got dropped or knocked out three times previous didn't he, he got knocked out by the kid, oh, the South African kid knocked him out, didn't he? There's a, there's a few knocked him out, I forgot the kid's name now, my mind's gone blank, but... Uh, there's a few knocked Vladimir out, now, he's got a weak chin, hasn't he? He's got a weak chin, so he went back into safety mode, and Vladimir's thinking, Joshua, he's got four belts, Wilder's got the other one, and he's thought, I've sparred them both, I can beat them both. But he's 42 and he's 43 next, so I don't see Vladimir coming back at 43 year old and doing anything. 
you've got school off Tyson Fury and Joshua knocked him out. Now, you get knocked out again, it'd probably be even worse. But he's probably going to be on that level of Dillian White, Poole F, Taka, Mandy Ruiz. He's probably that level, isn't he? You could put Yui in that bracket, but I put Yui above all them because he beat Parker. So if you've got Joshua and Wilder sitting at the top of the tree, on the next level, I think you've got Yui. I do, I think you've got Yui Fury on that next level. Maybe a touch below him, Poole left Dillian White, Vladimir. People might say you're being crazy there, but I just watched that Parker fight again last night. People need to go watch it and just go watch what he does. Nah, uh, you might think I'm crazy, but that's my opinion. I'm entitled to it. I've been around boxing long enough to understand when somebody controls the fight with his jab. Now, a gentleman who died 20 years or 21 years ago just down here, Bruce Woodcock, British Commonwealth, European champion and he beat a world champion who never had a belt he beat Lee Savold and then he lost his rematch when it were fought world title go have a look on box right 1950 70,000 people there in London at White City now Bruce always used to say to me if you've got a jab you've got a weapon everything comes off the jab doesn't it everything now just my honest opinion and I think that Yui will learn from not throwing that right hand as much. That's what I think. People can say he tried to nick the fight, but Parker wasn't really doing anything. He was do, you, do you get points and win rounds for ploughing forward? Because if you do, uh, Aturo Gatti and Ricky Atten, people like that, they'd never get beat, would they? Although Ricky Atten's fights he lost, they were all knocked out in one of the ones he lost. The point I'm trying to make is you shouldn't just get victories over certain boxers it's just for coming forward. Whatever happened to the art of boxing? Do you know what I mean? So, shout out to my sponsors again, K Official. I reckon. Got a lot of business. Hey? <laughs> Big Porky in his hoodie. Hey? Probably look a lot better on Dave Allen though than me, won't it? He's got bigger arms than me, or so he reckons. If you're watching Dave, hello mate. Hashtag Turbo Trump Train. <laughs> I hope you all like the interview I did with Josh uh, Whale down at Corner Pocket. He's in there every day. I see him every day in there, Josh. I do two hours a day in there. Which brings me to Something that somebody asked me the other day, uh, what were it? Pool balls. Why? Why do you play a bit of snooker when you prefer pool? Obviously, you know I, I played serious pool 30 years ago. But let me just point this out. American pool balls are two and a quarter inch, and so is the cue ball, and they weigh 169 gram. Now British pool balls are only two inch and they weigh 118 gram but you know the British cue ball that's 96 gram it's just a touch smaller why is that the reason is because the white ball needs to come out at the other end so when it goes down the pockets it's a bit smaller in it but somebody says to me when you play pool Russ if you ever you, we see your videos on Twitter you don't seem to do much with cue ball now all you can do with an American pool ball is go forward or backward for the simple reason that the, co the corner pocket in Mexborough they've only got nine millimeter cues right now you need a 13 mil cue to play American pool now the, the reason the cloth looks quicker is because the cloth hasn't got a nap on it like English pool tables so just remember so it's like an ice skating ring in it Plus American cues are thicker with a thicker tip because the balls are bigger aren't they? If you've got a big ball like that you can't do that with it can you? English pool balls you can do something with it if you've got an ilk master tip. When you're playing with house cues you can't do that with it. But Jonathan, the question you're on about, the reason is I play snooker. I only set up shots. I play 21 balls with black off spot. I can pot them continuously. I try to get 18, 19, 20 or 21. 
And if you can keep your eye in at certain shots on a 12 foot table, it's good when you play on a 6x3, isn't it? Uh, we're going off track a bit here, I just wanted to ask that. There were some other questions I got DM'd in, and I'm not going to do them today. Uh, one, of, one of the questions, what did I get DM'd? Nah. Oh, I think I've got, I've got it here. I usually write them all down off my DM because my eyes are terrible without my glasses. Oh, Robin Reid. Uh, let me find that, uh, let me find that DM out now and I'll, I'll answer it. But getting back to Yui Fury, in my opinion, Yui needs to be his mandatory. have a little look. Robin, I'm in, uh, I'm in Cheadle tomorrow, Cheadle Hume tomorrow, uh, SK8 I think it is, and then I'm, I'll, I'll be bouncing about Bolton tomorrow, so I'll keep you informed through day what time, yeah? Alright mate. But uh, Huey needs to get into his manager position, position and I can't wait till he does, you know, because it'll shut a few people up, won't it? He needs his chance, doesn't he? I mean, his dad's worked really hard. Re Yui's dad's worked really, really hard with him, and uh, he just needs his chance. Uh, in boxing, some people don't get the chance, but if you go through Yui's record, you'll see that he's had proper, proper grounding. He beat Redenko in his 15th fight. Now, I'm not, I'm not bothered. I'm not bothered what anybody says. Uh, if you can beat if you can beat Redenko uh, in your 15th fight and he's 24 and one, go Google Redenko. 24 and one he is, or he was. Yui fought him in his 15th fight. After he beat him, everybody in boxing was saying, "Oh, how do you match Yui? How old were Yui then? 20 year old were he? Were he 20 year old? 19 or 20?" Go check that up, Yui Fury's 15th fight, how old he was. Because after he beat Redenko, Mick Hennessy found it hard to match him. And I can understand that. And a lot of people, I see a lot of tweets that get, they get sent to Peter Fury saying you should get rid of him, Mick Hennessy, because he's not uh, matched Yui correctly. I, how can you match somebody though that's a young kid and he's just took out one of the top guys? At the time, and I'm like, he, he want a, he want a gatekeeper, Ridenko then, and you schooled him on points. He wanted a gatekeeper, so Eddie Hearn didn't want Ridenko near Joshua, did he? Or Dillian White, and they didn't want Brown Bread Fred near him, did they? That Fred Cassie, because he roughs them up, doesn't he? He's a Saki Obika of heavyweight division, eh? You would beat him, didn't he? Fought WBO Intercontinental. Who wanted to fight him, Fred Cassie? I personally, when Mick Hennessy matched that, I thought, good on you mate, but I also thought, ooh, my bum was squeaking. Do you know why it was squeaking? Because Fred Cassie can rough you up, but you is a better person for fighting it. I forgot when it clicked off then, but I was just saying there, good on Mick Hennessy for matching Yui with Fred Cassie and Dimitrenko, because they're Yui's best wins apart from Parker that he got shafted with. Dimitrenko in his 15th fight and he's still a kid, come on. Yeah, I know Yui's got a, got a world amateur gold medal, but let's have it right. 15th fight, Dimitrenko, 24 and 1. Eh? Do you know what I'm saying? Now, good on Mick Hennessy because Yui's for southpaws, he's fought messers like Fred Cassie or Ed Butt, yeah, he's been cut, he's gone through the mill, he's even had a bad decision against him, against Parker, in a world title fight, two undefeated guys fighting in a world title fight in Manchester, the fight they said won't happen, so you've got to give him his dues, haven't you, and you've got to give Mick Hennessy his dues as well, so all them people saying that Mick Hennessy should, should be sacked, 
and blah de blah. Why would you say that? If you can't if you can't match Yui, who are you gonna match him with? Who, who's Yui gonna be matched with after he beat Sexton? Who? Who's he gonna fight after Sexton? Where do you, where does he go? Who's gonna wanna fight him? Who's gonna wanna fight him? Joshua wanted to fight him, but they were offering chump chains. That change that they offered Yui to fight him wouldn't have bought a brand new rain, Range Rover. This is from Max in Manchester. I usually write these out and, and uh, on, on my pad, but uh, hi Russ, a question for your next blast. Tyson Fury beats AJ and Wilder at his best, but in my opinion he is boring to watch in the ring. What are your thoughts? My eyes are going, man. What are your thoughts on this? Cheers, Max in Manchester. P.S. Hope the trolls that are giving you shit all get piles. <laughs> there you go. Max. At Maxi13131313. That's for them all say that I write the questions out. Which I do, because my eyes are bad. Uh, what do I think? What, what do I think about... What are your thoughts? Is Tyson crap to watch? Well, he's got 18 knockouts in 25 fights. And you never know what's going to happen. It's a bit like watching Alex Higgins, isn't it, at snooker. I'm a big, big Alex Higgins fan. Obviously, he dragged the snooker, didn't he, from the working men's clubs into the mainstream. And I think Tyson, I'm not saying he put boxing on Mark, but beating Vladimir Klitschko, that for me were exciting. I mean, I like to watch his style. Uh, that's all I'm going to comment on Tyson. I don't really want to say too much about it. What's his style like? I personally like watching him fight. I know a lot of people don't. They like to see knockouts. If Tyson had big muscles, everybody would be saying his best thing since sliced bread, wouldn't they? Same with Yui. But... Larry Holmes didn't have a, ain't got a muscle on his body, neither has Tony Bellew. But uh, some people just don't have the genetics, do they? Uh, to, to, to grow muscle tissue, everybody's built different. And I've got a friend who lives over there. He's a coloured gentleman. When he was 13 and I was 13, and we were both at school, we went to school, I thought he were one at teachers. Uh, he looked like Frank Bruno stripped off. I said, what, what, what year is he in him over there? They said, oh, he's in, he's, he's in the same year as us. I said, Jesus. I said, does he go to gym every day? And my mate said, no, he's never been to gym in his life. He was just born like that. Do you know what I mean? And some people have different genetics, don't they? You he could probably go to gym and lift weights every single day a week. But might not have a physique like Kenny Norton or Frank Bruno or Joshua. Everybody's different, aren't they? But you can't put muscles on chins. Your, t your chin don't grow a pair of arms and start lifting muscles, does it? So, you know what I mean? But uh, I'll do all the questions uh, later on in the week when I've got more to pick from. But uh, getting back to Joshua in heavyweight division, I think that... Uh, I think Yui beats Joshua. I know that may sound crazy in that, but once he's got that British title under, on, under his belt in the next three, three or four weeks and he's got a proper ranking, people can look at him and think he's a British champion and, he, and he's fought for a world title and the decision was a mandatory decision that everybody disputed. Now, in my opinion, he beats Joshua. Joshua hasn't shown me anything to suggest that he can beat certain styles. Now. Let's look at it again. What is boxing? Boxing is the sweet science, isn't it? Sweet science. Let me repeat that. Sweet science. Now, as far as I'm concerned, it's hit and don't get hit. But there's also certain styles that people struggle with. Carl Froch, for example, he struggled with Durrell. He struggled a little bit with Matthew Barney. But when he fought Matthew Barney, he got measure of him, didn't he, after about five, six rounds and wore him down in home straight. Now, that prepared him for Durrell, but Durrell were more polished then and he was undefeated. He was Olympic medalist as well, Olympic bronze. Now, as far as I'm concerned, Frotch struggled with them styles. He struggled with Jermaine Taylor, movers. He struggled with Ward. 
but Ward had a bit more to his game. He wasn't just a, a mover who had technical skills. He was very dirty on it inside and the referee let him do what he wanted. If it had been in England, it might have been a different fight. Ward might have had to open up a bit. Now, I know a referee, I'm not going to say his name on here, but he told me he would have disqualified uh, Ward for what he did. He would have at least took a point off on the third time. He never got a warning once. They had, they had it in Ward's country with Ward's referee. Ward never left his back garden, did he, for a full tournament? They mind all that he flew to New Jersey, he's still America, isn't it? He? he had all his fights four miles from his house and then he fought in the same country for the final. Frotch had one fight in England against Durrell. Some people say he got lucky. He got the nod. Durrell had a point took off him, didn't he? So that's like a knockdown, isn't it? You have a point took off you and you're fighting away from home, what's that tell you? As far as I'm concerned, in my opinion, Frotch beat Durrell. It wasn't just a squeak by him, he got the nod. He beat, every, he beat everybody he fought, but he didn't get Robert Green against Ward. People can say, yeah, 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 blah, blah, blah. You're only saying that because you like Frotch. Look, he got beat, didn't he? He got beat. Two judges had it seven rounds to five. I had it seven four to Ward with a round shared. I know people, certain people on Twitter don't like 10 10 rounds. Sometimes you just can't split people, can you? If you had CompuBox and they both were drawing a fight and they were going into a deciding round and they're both drawing in that deciding round they both hit each other 12 times on compu box that's a 10-10 round isn't it so 10-10 rounds can be scored what if a guy's on back foot and he's swerving a guy and dodging him does that mean he, he gets the round because he hit him 12 times and because the other guy's forcing the fight what if a certain judge likes a guy that dodges him and fights on back foot who says you have to score a round uh, coming out, go, dodging people on back foot? Who says you have to score it on front, front foot just because you're coming forward? You land punches in a round, so if you both land 12 each, it's a drawn round, isn't it? I don't think there should be that many drawn rounds. I think people should commit themselves one way or other, whether you're a pundit or a judge, but people might just say, oh, you, you just say talking for the sake of it. I'm not, I'm just saying it as I see it. It's a very complex sport boxing. But, but getting back to the heavyweight division, I think that Joshua is going to fight Big Baby Miller next and get an exemption. That's what I think is going to happen. If not, I don't think they're going to go to Russia. I think they might end up dropping one at belts. Who's to say that Wilder ain't going to accept the decision? Who's to say that? Eddie keeps saying that they've been overpaying and overpaying and overpaying and that the end goal was to get all the belts. Well now it's come to the last time out of all these 21 fights. They're on the 22nd fight and it's the last time that they're going to have to overpay. And he's saying, do you know what, I'm not going to do it. And it's the last leg of the full 22 fights. 22 fights that gets you a British title, a WBC international title and five world title belts and the ring magazine belt it's the carte blanche it's the full lot and he won't give Wilder that extra few million quid and deprive all the fans of that that to me tells me that Eddie Hearn does not want to fight Wilder Barry Hearn told me a few years ago why do we want to fight him it's a business, Porky. It's a business. And people like you need to understand that. So, yeah, we do. We do understand that. It's a business. So, you and your band of little brothers ranting off on Twitter, blah, blah, blah. Look, I understand it's a business, Barry, but you keep saying you want all the belts and you want to do what's right. Fuck fans. Joshua, fuck fans. I've got videos on my computer in my house and it says... It's not about the money. Well, if it's not about the money, you're getting like 20 odd million quid to fight Wilder. If it's not about the money, just pay Wilder what he wants and let's get the fight on. Just do what Gatti did when he fought Ward. He gave Ward his third fight, didn't he? So let's just pay him. Do you know what I mean? Mickey Ward never had a pot to piss until he fought Gatti in rematch and then he got another payday in third fight. Just pay him and that's it. And that's what Joshua should do. Joshua, just pay him. Eddie, 
just pay Wilder and let's get this fight over and done with. And then you can sit at the top with all the belts and then everybody else can plot to get them all back off you. Because that's what, that's what happens. Just get them that once and then let them all get split up again. That's what we like to see, don't we? Which brings me to Lennox Lewis. Lennox Lewis. Lennox Lewis has been on Twitter recently and he's been having a go at my pal, Big Joe Egan. Now, I've got a lot of time for Joe Egan. He, uh, he came to a celebration of Dennis's dad's life on January 11th, or was it a week after? Middle of January 2017. He came, he paid his respects, and uh, I haven't forgot that, so I've got a lot of time for Joe Egan. Uh, well, I've just had to turn it, off, turn it over again. Every 12 minutes I'm having to jump up, I need to get instructions out, don't I? Right, which gets me back to Joe Egan. Right, Lennox Lewis said that it's not true that Mike Tyson knocked him out for five minutes in sparring. Joe Egan, big Joe Egan from Ireland, says it is true. Now, you wouldn't have thought that somebody of Joe Egan's elk would go around saying things that are not true, would you? You know, it, when Joe were an uh, Irish amateur fighter, he were, he were a big star. Big things were tipped for him. I know he only, only had four fights as a pro. He went three, three and one in a while. I don't know if he had hand injuries. I, I, heard, I don't know full ins and outs. Uh, I don't know if, he had, if there were politics going on in the background, but I know Big Joe Egan can fight. He can have a do. Now, why would Joe want to make that up? He was Mike Tyson's chief sparring partner, wasn't he, for years? He was there in, in camp with Tyson. Uh, Glenn McClory were there. So why, why would... Uh, I know Joe's, Joe's admitted that he got knocked about by Tyson, but why would he want to make something up saying that Lennox got knocked out by Tyson if it didn't happen. So I think that Lennox, Lennox Lewis is very sensitive and he seems to tweet a lot about what he's achieved and he likes to get it out there what he's done. Well Lennox, we're not going to forget you, are we? I know, I know Joshua's getting all the kudos at the moment, Lennox, and I know you've spoke about retirement, but You've got to let it go, Lennox. Right, you had your time. You banked 100 million net. You know what I mean, Lennox? You're not short of a few quid, are you? And you even took your cut from David Price's loss to Thompson, which I don't agree. I don't agree with. I don't agree with. You didn't need that money, Lennox. So why you did that, I don't know. I don't know. But that's between your. I suppose business is business, isn't it? But Lennox, don't be so sensitive. If Mike Tyson dropped you, he's sparring, isn't it? Carl Froch dropped George Grove with 16 ounce pillars on and headgear and he pulled short. But Grove set about him, didn't he, when they fought? And it grew, a week later, he went up and set about Carl and had better at sparring, he didn't drop him. Stuff happens in sparring, doesn't it? I know somebody that's watched uh, James DeGale get knocked about by Chris Eubank and sparring. Who's to say that DeGale would do that in a fight though with him? Probably would get knocked about by Chris Eubank again, but I also heard that uh, the first time they sparred that Eubank didn't do so good. So stuff happens, doesn't it, in sparring. It's, don't be so sensitive, Lennox. Don't be so sensitive. Dave Allen used to get flogged all the time over at EIS by Joshua. He's had his nose broke five times. Five times Dave's had his nose broke. But he can only really recall two of them sessions where he had better of him. Do you know what I mean? Dave, a couple of times Dave spun him and gave him a whack on bum with his glove and that. You know, uh, and Joshua didn't like that, do you know what I mean? I'm not going to go into what was said, but, you know, he, he ain't all what he's seen. Joshua was very raw. He's just a big athlete, and they've had to do what, what they can with him. Obviously, McCracken, when he first saw him, he thought, we've got a Frank Bruno here. We, right, the way we market him, we can all eat at the big dinner table. And all them that are knocking about with Joshua, they don't care about him. They care about money. 
people care about money in boxing it's awful it's you know I, I, I've surrounded myself with people who in boxing who are not really bothered about money Dave Allen for example he's not really money motivated Dennis Hobson he's not money motivated contrary to what people think in boxing he's not money motivated I can show you Dennis's books from boxing and there ain't no profits getting made obviously he's a multi-millionaire from other businesses Dennis isn't he so boxing's a hobby to him Peter Fury it's same he's a very wealthy man but he doesn't take anything out of boxing he's, Peter Fury is not going to get a trainer's fee that's going to be any good from Peter McDonough and Savannah Marshall is he and he's not going to take off Huey so he you know and I'd be very surprised if he took anything off Ty Mitchell because he's close friends with Ty's dad and he's watched Ty grow up so Peter's not in it for money not everybody is in boxing for money look at Clifton Mitchell he was knocking everybody out he finished up with a career total of 18 and 2 and out of them 18 I think 16 were knocked out Clifton retired at what it 30 year old, round about that, could have been 31, very young after he fought for the European title, now Clifton could have hung around, couldn't he, in boxing and picking up, you know, money here, there and everywhere, but he ain't like that, he's not money motivated, he, not everybody is like Eddie Hearn, Adrian, and Frank Warren, not everybody is like that, some people, they just like to be involved with in boxing for for the crack, not only for the buzz. You know, when when amateur when boxers turn pro, they were amateurs before then. They never got no money, did they for being amateurs? So what what what, what I can't explain it now. So they never got no money as amateurs, so they still did the sport then, they still loved it, didn't they? It's, you do it if you love the sport. I play a lot of pool now, I I've picked a queue up again and I've fallen back in love with it and there's other things to my game I'm trying to correct you know I've changed my tip you know I've, I've got my stance right I'm putting the effort in uh, I'm practicing just long pots all day and it's very repetitive but I, I enjoy it because sometimes life's for enjoying isn't it I've spent 10 years in prison over a 14 year period and you know in the last few years some people that I had a lot of time for and loved have died so some people have gone to prison for long sentences and sometimes you just got to count your blessings aren't you Gil next door the woman next door her daughter died 37 year old how bad is that you know they've got uh, she's got a four year old five, five year old kid same age as my kids so you know you never know what's around the corner so be happy with your lot look at that Scott Westcalf dying on Steffi Ball's show God that must be awful for his family and that imagine that that is shocking isn't it and this is a sport and we criticise people for matchups and oh they should fight here there and everywhere and I'm one of the biggest culprits but you never know what's around the corner so just enjoy it it's like Eddie pay Wilder what he wants because if you don't and the fight slips away Wilder could get beat by somebody and then it's, it's going to be another Lennox Lewis Riddick bow, isn't it? A Ricky Hatton Jr. Witter. A Frotch Carl Zaggy. It's going to be one of them, isn't it? Maybe a Frotch De Gale. Them fights never happened, did they? Why? Money. Frotch Chavez, that didn't happen, did it? Frotch could have had a trilogy with Carl Zaggy, couldn't he? Instead of Carl Zaggy fighting Hopkins and Roy Jones. So when Carl Frotch for Pascal in 2008 he could have fought Calzaghi, Calzaghi were there to be took and he knew it as well that's why he fought guys in the 40s he didn't want Frotch age 30 coming up to 31 fighting him did he that would have been a hard fight and Frotch at the time had knocked 19 out 23 out so you know he, he were hmm, he, he he was icing people and people are, say, people are saying Callum Smith ice, were icing people well he ain't lately has he which brings me to Callum Smith uh, I don't really know what to make of the Callum Smith situation can he fight? yeah he can fight is he world class? 
what is world class? Let's look at Callum Smith's CV. How many world champions has he beat? None. How many current world champions, future world champions, or former world champions has Callum Smith beat? None. He hasn't beat any, has he? He's not beat none. So if he's not if he's not beat a former or a current or a future world champion out of all these twenty odd fights, who has Callum Smith beat? Well let's have a look, shall we? Beat Rocky Fielding, ranked twenty nine on box rec. He's beat Ribras, who were ranked thirty two on box rec at the time. He's beat Eric Scogland, who were ranked number eleven on box rec. So Callum Smith's highest ranked box rec win is number eleven. So basically he's not beat a top ten box rec. But he's in the final of a tournament that's gonna get him three million dollars or five million. So you've got to take your hands off to Callum Smith's management team, aren't they, for getting him in this position safely. He's been wrapped in cotton wool. He's been wrapped in 100 bags of cotton wool, hasn't he? Uh, Paul Smith, he's fought six former, current and future world champions. And he's got Norton six. Now, Paul Smith's not been wrapped in cotton wool, has he? Why not? Because once he suffered that first loss, he won't really bothered, worry. Once a fighter suffers his loss, first loss, that's it, they just go for it, don't they? Unless you're Gary Cornish. Now, Liam Smith, how many world champions has Liam Smith fought? One. Canelo got beat. But, he was, but Liam's a former world champion. So I, I can, you, can you explain that to me? Because I don't know. Who's, how many other Smiths has left? I'm not having to go to the Smiths, I'm just going for the record. I'm talking about matchmaking. Stephen Smith, he's been matched hard. Why has Stephen been matched hard? Why? I don't know that. I don't know, but I think he's best one out of lot. He's fought four world champions, former and current and future, because Selby beat him, didn't he? So he's like, the, he were a future world champion. So the Smiths have got Norton 11 against former and current world champions. Norton 11, so they've not beat a world champion, former, current or future. Why? Liam has been protected and matched and wrapped in cotton wool, but then once the Canelo fight came, they weren't wrapped in cotton wool then, were they? Oh no, oh no. They threw him out there to lose belt. And then you've got Callum, he's been protected. But as soon as the big big money came up for that tournament, they threw him in that, didn't they? When really, he should have gone and fought Anthony Durrell. Well, I think they sat at home and they thought about it, and then they looked at the Super 6 tournament and thought, Scogland, maybe Jürgen Bremer, and probably Groves or, the, or Eubank. They've looked at them and for Anthony Durrell against Sider all them, they thought we can win this tournament. Now, I've been a critic of Joe Gallagher's over the years. I'm not a critic of him as a trainer because he's, he's obviously, he's won titles and a British, you know, has he won a European? I think, yeah, I think he's won a European. He's won world titles and a few world titles. So he's, he's obviously knows what he's on with. Ring trainer at year, but, He's a trainer and a manager, so if the, if the fighter doesn't like him as a trainer, is he stuck with him because he's his manager? Does he have to put up with him? I don't know, but he obviously looks after his fighters, doesn't he? Because they're all rich, aren't they, at Smith? So he's done well by him, hasn't he? So we can't really give him a hard time. But I've been a critic of his matchmaking, mainly, because I think that Callum should have, had his, should have fought for a world title by now, shouldn't he? I mean, you were ranked in WBC top 10 since 2013, so 
We're now coming towards second half of 2018, aren't we? After June. And that's when he fights the final, isn't it? So second half of 2018, Callum's been a pro since 2012, hasn't he? So it's dragging on a bit, isn't it? But Carl Froch never got his world title fight till six year, nine months. So he, he had to wait, didn't he? So Callum's got his world title shot probably about nine months quicker than Froch. So, and we also, Mick Hennessy did a great job, didn't we? So we can't complain, can we? Tyson Fury turned pro December the 6th, 2008. November the 28th, 2015, he fought Vladimir. So it took seven years, all but seven, all but eight days. So it took Tyson seven years to get to Vladimir. It took Froch six years, nine months to get to Pascal because they had to go through the, 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 the process of Joe Calzaghe uh, had him waiting to the full nine months, didn't he, before they vacated the WBC. Otherwise, Carl would have had that belt fighting for it for six years. Joe knew he was going to vacate, but he went back and forth for nine months. Will he, will he or won't he? Uh, Mick Hennessy now says that Carl Froch didn't want to fight Carl Zaggy. Carl says differently. So there's two sides to every story, but you read into that what you want to read, don't you? But uh, the point is, it, the fight didn't happen, did it? So he. Yui got Yui got his chance quicker though, didn't he? Yui's Yui's uh, got his title quicker than them. He took his chance, didn't he? And he got ripped. But you can go for your fight, your title when you're ready. Joshua were ready after three years, one if it is, or four year, three and a half year. But he's an Olympic gold medalist, so she, he should have got there, shouldn't he? But getting back to Joe Gallagher, yeah, he's a good, he's a decent trainer, I suppose. But they all have a similar style, don't they? I think. I think so. I think they all have a similar style. I think the best fighter he's got is probably, I think, Stephen Smith, technical-wise. He's very good. But you'd say Crawler's most successful, wouldn't you, out of all Joe's charges. But uh, is it going to be Callum? Is he going to be a star? If he beats Groves, will there be a rematch? I'd say yes. There'll be a rematch. They'll want to milk it, won't they? Callum will. If he beats... Groves and there's no rematch. He'll go for De Gale, won't he? Either way, De Gale's going to be hovering now, isn't he? With the IBF belt, and he's a shot fighter. So you'd only see you'd only see James De Gale having one more world title fight, wouldn't you? Unless you can get a rematch in the clause. But it remains to be seen what what exactly what routes are going to going to happen now. But I think it's starting to hot up a bit at 168 now because it's. It's all a bit dead now since Ward and Froch went, hasn't it? It's all been a bit downhill in my opinion. Uh, but the heavyweight division seems to be hotting up. Everybody seems to be like a character, aren't they? They've all got different personality. Which brings me to the next gen lot. Not next gen, Porky. Not next gen. Shout out K Official, my sponsors. My other sponsors. House of Churchill Taylors in Doncaster, Bowers Fold. Thank you to Ali for my shirts. Lovely them shirts. Edlington Motors, Carl Gibson, thank you for the free MOTs. Front door, thank you very much to Jason Stewart at Ledger Frames. Could do your bathroom window, Jason, if you're watching. Half price. <laughs> Uh, thanks to Robert Elise for the Lacoste shirts. You can't Lacoste t-shirts. Can't get no Elise stuff no more. So how is it, Robert Elise? What's the company called? He works at now. Shoreline Industrial Estate. What's that place now? Like uh, warehouse called now? Back at McDonald's. Anyway, cheers. Anyway, Rob. I ain't got them on today because it looks like I've got a pair of tits when I wear them t-shirts. You know what I mean? I need a fucking bra. But uh, I need to get some weight off, don't I? Get these weights lifted. But, uh, well, how do I see the final going? I see Groves beating Callum Smith. I see Yui winning the world title in the next three years. Groves beats Callum Smith. I, I see Dillian White against Pulef. Pulef beats Dillian White. 
but gets jobbed. You heard that from me first. Dave Allen against Dave Owl rematch. If it happens, mate, fourth in Warsaw. Dave Allen knocks him out. How do I see the next gen lot? Well, first things first, Lewis Ritson, I rate him very much. My pal Jaffa is his manager, and I rate him, Lewis Ritson. He's blitzed through that lightweight division, hasn't he? Uh, hardest fight he had with Robbie Barrett. So, you've got to give credit there to Steffi Bull, aren't you, and his team. Uh, Robbie Barrett didn't have a bad day, he just came up against a better kid, and that's, that's what happened. I think Scott Cardell's finished now, though. He's done now. I think he's finished at British level. Lewis Ritson, he, be, he wins the world title. I'd like, I'd like to see him against Linares. Does he beat Linares? Yeah. I think Lomachenko beats Linares. I think Lewis Ritson beats Luke Campbell. And I think he beats Linares. He's on the slide. I think Luke Campbell could fight Linares for a vacant belt after Lomachenko beats Linares. I think the, the next gen lot, Lawrence Acoli, I think he's crap. You heard that from me first. I do not rate him. Chamberlain, I think he's a shocking. How they got all that big ups for that O2, I don't know. I ain't got no against them personally, but Jesus, how were they headlining a show? How can they ever headline again? I think Matty Askin wrecked. Uh, rips, should I say, and this is something else. Matty Askin rips Lawrence Coley some new cheeks. Rips him. Rips him to bits. Matty Askin, you heard it from me, smokes Lawrence Coley's boots. Smokes them. Have I got any boots in here to smoke? No. Smokes them. Uh, I think the, the Cruiserweight division is looking very good. And I think that Matty Askin is good enough to win a European title and challenge for a world title. But he shouldn't be in any rush because while ever you've got Ersk hanging about with all them belts or the guy who fights in the final, there's going to be no, no way in there for Matty Askin. He's going to struggle against Ersk, who I think will win the final. I think Ersk needs to win and then move up and then all them belts come free. And then I'd like to see... Matty Askin and all the rest of them all have like a little super eight or something like this world boxing series. I'd like to see another one of them, but on a Brit British level, I'd like to see somebody like Carl Greaves, Steffi Ball, Neil Kettleborough, uh, Dennis Hobson, Steve Goodwin, all do something together. Uh, all do something together at British level. We cr we load a cruiserweight. That's what I'd like to see. I'd like to see Dave Allen at cruiserweight. I mean, Glenn McCrory rings me once a week or texts me every other day saying, "Have a word with Dave. Tell him he needs a good hand to cruiser. If I can do 13 stone eight back in the day, Dave can. <clears throat> but Dave also likes to walk about at 18 stone, doesn't he? And get down to 16 and fight. So could he get down to 14 stone four? Yeah, but he reckons he'd have to lose a leg to do it. So, it remains to be seen, doesn't it? But that's just my take on it, isn't it? On boxing. It, what do I know? I mean, what, what do I know? My opinion don't mean Jack, does it? It don't mean Jack starting to rain. But it's just boxing, it's just opinions, isn't it? What, what do I think to podcasts at the moment? Which podcast do I listen to? Somebody were asking me. Let's see if we can find that question. Uh, I think I like the New Age Podfather, Martin Theobald, Andy White, Terry Chapandama. Shout out to them. I like Ring Talk with Steve Goodwin and Martin Theobald. I like that. Uh, I like Nuthouse Podcast. I'm a big fan of that. Shout out to all them lads on there. Andy Patterson. Tommy Allen, Guru Allen. But isn't it funny how people call Tommy the Guru Allen now? It's like he's put that, it's like it's his middle.